Okay, good. Yeah. Are we going? Yeah. We have gone. So no. I didn't say go. I said, are you ready? And I said, yeah. And then, But I didn't say go, did I? Would you like me to start it again? Yeah, I'll let, no, just keep going. But just say, I'll say go and you go. Okay. Ready? Go. Go. Are we going? Go. Good. Yeah. Right. So having done some of the, uh, the wedges, we're going to do a few more props now. So this would be a dorsal prop um, for somebody with a corn on an IPJ there. And we're trying to protect it from the skin. And there are two ways, or two ways that I know of that I use regularly to do it. Uh, an offloading and a cover. So usual thing, fold it into the middle until it's a nice uniform colour. And when it's a uniform colour, roll it into one homogenous ball with no creases. Uh, this one is a little bit tricky because you've got to have the two tails that go between it ever so slightly thinner. So you can sort of rough shape it over your finger. shape the bit on the top. So we're looking for a, a sort of hump here and we push that hump ever so slightly behind the corn. So take it out, make sure that the bits underneath are not too wide and not too bulky. You can see the uh, you can see the plan there. Focus. Um, so you've got a fairly thick sort of cut out. So when the shoe presses down on it, the shoe presses down on there, and uh, that keeps it off of the toe. Um, as I say, you want that to be reasonably thin. Those bits between only need to be there to hold it in place. Tiny little, um, tiny little lugs underneath. So that would be your um, one if you wanted to deflect off of it. When I say, you said unpause it. I said unpause it when I said. I haven't said yet. Right, unpause it now. Okay. So the second one would be if a similar sort of corn in the same sort of place, but if you actually want to cover it over. So once again, you sort of half mold it around your finger, pop it on. But this time, you actually leave a cover over the um the corn you don't necessarily want it to be very thick over the corn but this was really good if you get those ones that are really really dry so you sort of squeeze it like that so it's as thin as it can be over that knuckle yeah so you've got a similar sort of shape Insofar, oh, if I can get it, persuade it to focus. Insofar as you've got the the divot there and the hump behind it, um, but this time you leave a thin layer of the silicon. Won't this focus? I don't know why won't it focus? What have you done to it? You've broken it. I haven't. Thin layer of silicon over the uh, the corn itself. So taken off. Looks like that. That bit in the middle is uh, there's no thickness to it. So that's just if you want to do something to actually directly cover the corn. Bear in mind that a lot of those dorsal corns can be quite fragile skin and quite dry skin. That's not a bad way to stop them drying out. So that's two different types of dorsal. So the next one is um, something I call a socializer. Um, and it is designed for toes which either over or under ride. So the, 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 the significance of socialising is trying to keep everything all nice and close together, as opposed to having one lonely toe out there all unloved and rubbing on the shoe. So if we want to keep that toe in line with the others, and this, this could apply just as easily with any, but it's usually the second toe which ends up overriding. Big toe comes across, plant plate fails. Uh, if we're going to do that, there's two ways we can do it. One, we, we can sort of push down on it from the top 
And the other is that if we keep those two toes apart, then there is a slot for it. So pressure from the shoe will push it into the, the slot made for it rather than pushing it onto the, the toe there. Okay, so once again, we have molded our nice homogenous blob. And this one is going to be sausage shaped. And we're going to go under that toe, over that toe, and under that toe. Under the big toe, you would want it to be quite thin because that can cause irritation otherwise. Um, under the third toe, it doesn't matter as much. And on the top, it just needs to sort of keep that thing, that toe, planter flexed. You'd, uh, you'd make this with the toe planter flexed. If you end up with a bit of extra, you can always pop up between the second and third there. And again, always just nudge it forward away from that planter area. So this is almost like a strap. It's not a million miles away from the version that we do with strapping. Um, but that should stop that toe from clambering up onto the first toe. Um, it will work better if you've got a mobile second toe. If the second toe is fixed and retracted or fixed in dorsiflexion, this won't work at all. Um, but if it's not, that can work well. So that's a, a sort of over the top socializer. So the second version of a socializer is to try and keep the gap. Um, this won't push the toe down, but it will stop the other toes from crowding in. So this would be if you've got that sort of thing or anything similar. Um, you start off with your, your homogenous blob um, and then you need to work it into a series of sort of upwards pegs. It helps if you can start it off first outside. And with these ones, you don't want it to be too fine underneath. It's got to be strong enough underneath to keep the toes apart. And the, uh, the pegs up the middle have to be tall enough to actually hold the toes in line. So from the top, it will look like that. From the top again, it will look like that. The idea with this is that these toes want to close together. Um, if that toe is up in the air, that prop will sort of keep them somewhat separated. Um, and then when the shoe presses on that, it's got somewhere to drop into. So this is essentially you pushing the big toe that way by using that toe and that toe as a buttress. If the big toe tries to abduct outwards, sorry, abduct outwards, then you've got three toes holding it back. So if you've lost the, the function of the second toe, if the second toe is up out the way... Um, it stops the big toe filling the gap, which means that when the shoe presses down on it, um, it can still drop into its own little zone there. And last but not least, we've got toe props. Now, there's two versions of this and three different um, flavours. I'm not going to show you all of them. But a toe prop is designed when you've got a, a clawed toe like that or a hammer toe like that, and you're getting an apical lesion on the tip of the toe. Um, what we want to do is one of two things. Either, for a normal prop, you want to lift it off the floor. So put something under there so that that tip of the toe can't sit on the floor. Your, your toe is being held underneath. That's an ordinary prop. Um, the other version of it is when you have a really, really retracted toe and it's actually closing in all together like that. Are you all right? Okay, as long as you do bend that way. Um, then sometimes what you want is almost a ramp, so a triangle shaped wedge so that the toe slides down it. A sketch would make that easier to see. So uh, an ordinary prop would look like this. If the corn is there, uh, the toe is over like that, and we just want to physically lift that tip of the toe off the ground. A ramp prop is a different shape. Uh, it's sort of pyramid shaped, so that when that is pushed downwards, it actually straightens the toe. Um, rather than lifting it, we're trying to, to straighten it out. Subtle difference, but um, hopefully you'll, you'll see the difference um, when I make them. 
So once again, we want a nice uh, round one. I'll show you a single and a, a triple. So a single cradle. Oops. Make your sort of rough shape before you put it in. Through there. And of course, Eleanor's toes are beautifully straight, and normally you're going to be doing this with somebody's toes with that shape. Can you sort of do that with your... There we go, thank you. So you don't want it particularly thick in between, but you do want it thick under there. And a nice rounded shape. So that would be a single. A little harder to do when somebody's actually uh, flexing their toe. Just relax your feet for me then. So come out looking like that. It's on the safe side. I don't want the aggro. Right, okay. So normal um, triple toe prop, um, similar to the sort of handbag design that uh, you will have seen. Pop one end in there, flatten it. Poke it through, flatten it at the top on the other end. Toes want to be together enough that um, it doesn't push these two apart. And once again, always push it away from the fibre fatty padding. Um, that's the most common area of irritation if you don't do that. And don't push it too hard down. If you squeeze that together too much, then of course the, um, the thing won't actually lift them. It's a little hard to show this on a foot which is not got um, claw toes but if you imagine that was overhanging more or less like that that will also coincidentally stop that little toe from uh, burrowing underneath the um, the other one the fourth toe so that would be your classic handbag shaped prop so this would be the uh, the ramp version um, Starts very much the same way. You still get your little, uh, your little sausage, and um, pop it in there. And is shaking her head at me in disgust that I'm talking about a little sausage. Um, Only after the last take. The the difference here is that we want it to be sort of triangle shaped. So we pinch it down, and the idea is that when the the tip of the toe, if it was a claw toe, sits like that, instead of lifting it off the ground it encourages it out that way. So we're much more of a sort of Toblerone shaped device. Always pushing it away from there, but tapering out to be smooth at the end. Like so. So you can hopefully see the difference between that one and that one. The one of them has a sort of tapered end and the other one is just a rounded bulge. So the ramp one is to try and extend the toe and the other one is to simply lift it. Okay, and the last one is a, um, a tail pad. So this would be for a um, corn on the IPJ there. It's essentially what it sounds like. It's a, a wedge, but with a, a little hook over the top. So once again, you sort of rough mold it before you put it in. Pop that in there. And then work a little, a little tail that just flips around the side there. Pushing it away from where the corn would be. So just like the dorsal pad, what we're doing here is trying to create something so that when it, the shoe pushes on there, that hip puts pressure on that bit rather than just on the knuckle, over like that. And it's surprising how well these guys actually stay in place. Um, you, you look as if it uh, looks as if it wouldn't, but it actually does. So that is a tail. So to recap from the top. Um, Two different types of socializer. These would be to keep a second toe 
from overriding the first toe, which can be done either by having something on top to push it down or something underneath to preserve the wedge, the, the gap rather, for it to sit down into. You've got a simple interdigital wedge for keeping toes apart. You've got an interdigital wedge with a window in it for keeping toes apart and having a specific cutout for a corn. Half proximal wedge um, is to slip in there like that and keep the distal end of the toes apart. Um, distal half wedge is the one that does the same but it hooks over the adjacent toe to um, open an air gap at the proximal edge. Single toe prop um, to lift a, an apex of a toe off the ground. I haven't made a double toe prop. Triple toe prop, um, the same but with three of them, like a handbag pad. Triple toe ramp prop is similar, but you taper out the leading edge there to sort of so that if a toe sits on that like that, it's pushed out like a ski jump. Rotational prop for the little toe to stop the little toe from burrowing underneath the fifth, stop it rotating. Um, and the tail prop um, that hooks over the little toe to keep the pressure off a corn. Um, and two different types of dorsal prop um, to protect a, a dorsal IPJ um, for a corn. Either the one on the right, which is just to have a, a deflection off of it, or the one on the left, which has that hump but also has a, a little bit of silicon over the top of it just to give it some protection and to stop it drying out. Um, so that is the glorious world of otterforms. Thank you very much to my very patient and lovely assistant.